what is one of your favorite memories from tra traveling with them? I can't tell you that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. Uh, no. I set the tone because I was shaking. I was scared mm -hmm. to death. And the first night, I actually turned my back to the crowd <laughs> and jumped across the stage. And, oh, my word. So, I was like, I'll just leave that to the people that know what they're doing. I'm a redneck from South Georgia. I don't need to write. <laughs> but even if Lee Black is an Alabama fan, you know, sometimes that's tough. You know, oh, you have to I'll pray wear. through a co-writer. But <laughs> oh, I said, hey, man, what's going on? I said, you all right? And he said, and standing in the office that day, we were all just standing there having coffee before we got going. Mm -hmm. And he said, dude, we've just been walking through fire this week. He said, I saw the look on your face when I said it. Wow. And he knew. He knew. Yeah. I, I mean, in my mind, I'm already right. <laughs> he just starts playing this, you know, and we were humming along. He said, let me introduce you to Jesus. And I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> right there. oh okay. So, what is your current wait, I wasn't ready. I'm just kidding. I'm ready. <laughs> what is if anybody's at the concert and wondering why I already changed suits oh, in new mission, word. there you go. Oh, my word. I'm sure y'all just die. I'm I sure y'all just die. I was die. done. I was done. Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by the blog. I hope you're having a great day and you're fixing to have an even better day. Not because of me, but because of my friend that's fixing to pop up on your screen in just a second. I want to say a huge thank you to Daywin Studios for allowing me to film in their studio. And also a big thank you to the man himself, Mr. Devin McGlamory, for being an awesome friend, supportive, and for doing this. I've been wanting to have him on for a long time, so I'm so excited. Guys, don't forget, we have interviews with Joseph Habedank. Katie Irwin of the Irwins, Scotty Inman of Triumphant Quartet, and also Ernie Haas of Ernie Haas' Signature Sound. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more because we still have more coming. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy this. It's going to be good. Hello everyone, welcome back to the blog. Today is different than you guys are used to and me, but I'm so excited to have my friend Devin McGlamory here at Day One Studios. So thank you so much for doing Absolutely. this. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Hey y'all. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, to jump in, um, give us an introduction, your family, what okay. you do, and kind of what you do on a daily basis. All right, well, I, uh, I'm married to my wife, Karen. We've got two beautiful kids, Carlin and Preston. Uh, Carlin is 12, Preston is nine. It's really hard to believe. Things are <laughs> old. Um, I travel and sing with Ernie House Signature Sound. I have for, I guess, roughly nine years now. And uh, I get to write great music right here at Day Win. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so. That's awesome. So, how did you get your start in gospel music? Take us through that. <laughs> uh, the Cliff Notes version of that is uh, I started singing when I was five. Mm -hmm. I started singing in church. And then uh, I grew up in South Georgia, and they would have gospel singings down there all the time. And when I was 10 or 11, uh, 11, I actually came to Nashville and recorded a little single, a little cassette Aww. single. And um, then I would come back every year, And uh, but then I started becoming the, just the gospel singing kid there in town. So when there was a concert, they would have me in. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it started like they'd have the Crab family or the Freemans or whoever wow. would come in, and I would open the program with two or three songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's a cool backstory. Um, the company that I always did my little cassettes with, mm -hmm was Day Wind Music Group. Wow. And so I was That's one of their cool. custom artists and then when I signed a publishing go here, uh, Ed shook my hand. Ed Leonard shook my hand and said, Welcome back home. Oh, and uh, wow. so that's kinda cool. Yeah, that's that's cool that came full circle. Yeah. That's awesome. So you traveled with one of the one of the best groups in gospel music, Karen Peck and New River. They're fantastic. So what is one of your favorite memories from tra traveling with them? I can't tell you that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> uh, no, they're, man, we had such a great time. Um, I was there five years, and wow. they, uh, they're still family to me. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gone and gone back and filled in with them a couple different times uh, when, when, when the guys had be out or something. And there's not too many people I would take my vacation time to go climb on another bus to sing with, but definitely uh, Karen and Susan, Ricky, Matthew, that whole crew. Yeah. I mean, that just there's so many great memories there. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I've met a couple of them, and they're like the sweetest people they're gold. ever. They're, gold. they're awesome. So after that, you had a period of transition, and then later you joined Ernie Haas and Signature Sound. So what was that like? Well, it was it was amazing. Um, I've been friends with Ernie for years. I met him years ago when I was the little gospel singing kid going to see the cathedrals in my little suit and tie, you know, just in case, you know, mm -hmm. just in case they called me up. And uh, so we we had been friends through the years, and he would always call and just give me advice. And I became friends with Doug and mm -hmm. Doug Anderson. And when that transition, when Ryan came off the road for a while, it just worked. It mm -hmm. was just, and so actually I went straight there from Karen Peck right into Ernie House Signature Sound. And, 
and it was just it was just awesome. I mean, we just we had a great time. We never even had a chance to rehearse. Wow. Uh, we went right to the studio, and then hit the road. And that, that night we opened. He said, "What are you most comfortable with?" I said, "Probably Reason <laughs> Enough." And he we opened up with that, and it just set the tone because I was shaking, I was scared mm -hmm. to death, and I ended up. You know how we do the jump on Glory yes. God Highs? Yes. Yeah, we didn't rehearse that. And uh, oh. so the first night, I actually turned my back to the crowd and jumped across the stage. And, oh, wow. So. Yeah. Wow. And it's got to be cool, too, for you, because I know that Glenn Payne was one of your yeah. heroes. So I know that that's got to be cool, singing with Ernie and just kind of carrying on that. It was. And, so. and when I came in, they were finishing up that Cathedral mm -hmm. Tribute yeah. project. So I had to go back in and relay my part. And um, so to be able to sing those songs that I grew up listening to was was. That's surreal. Cool. That's cool, yeah. And I remember whenever you joined, um, it was kind of right at the age where I was getting to know a lot of the groups. And um, that's I do remember the, the original members, but I do sure. remember majority of my memory is actually with you okay. singing that part. So it's really awesome. cool. So um, you spend a lot of time songwriting. And I know that that's one of your biggest passions. And um, you've won one, multiple awards for your songs. And um, you hear a lot of talk about your songs, and it's all good, and it's all wonderful. So, how did your passion come about for songwriting? I actually had uh, a couple people speaking to me and, and told me, you know, mm -hmm. hey, I know you're an artist, but you need to write. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'll just leave that to the people that know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm a redneck from South Georgia. I don't need to write. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, you, you've got something that you, you want to say, and, mm -hmm. and what better way to do it than through a song? Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And um, it was a good buddy of mine, Gerald Troutman, who is actually at in L.A. now, mm -hmm. writing songs and orchestrations yeah. for movies. And he said, man, I, I just, you, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. And then um, a friend of mine, Robin Collins, who we write with a lot, mm -hmm. um, she said, you know, hey, I want to write with you. I was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. She said, it's okay, we'll figure mm -hmm. it out. I just, you, I, you've got something to say. I remember uh, my buddy Jamie Daly, he told mm -hmm. me the same thing. He goes, man, you need to be writing. I was like, so all these people kept telling me what I needed to do, mm -hmm. and I was like, no. So um, my first co-write was with Robin Collins, and wow. uh, she said, I just, I believe in you. And, um, who she, Robin is a phenomenal lyricist. She's mm -hmm. amazing. She just signed with a pub deal with Warner Chapel, and she's, she's oh. killing it. Great, great writer, great person. And um, I remember walking in that room, and I was scared to death. And, but she told me, she said, you know, by yourself, you know, you're, you're probably great. Mm -hmm. But when you get in a room and collaborate with other people, you know, it's it's just magic comes alive, and yeah. you can somebody can say what you might think would be a stupid idea, mm -hmm. but it'll spawn an idea over here, and then exactly. ends up it just being spreads. yeah. And it's just the, the, I walked out that day thinking that was amazing, mm -hmm. and it was almost I don't know, it was this adrenaline rush almost. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at you know we started with nothing, just this simple idea, and it turned into this song. We created something, and um, I'll never forget that day. And she does she does this every cover. She's she prays right before we get started, and she said, Lord, may we not leave one word out, but may we not add anything that you don't want in there. That's good. And, uh, That's good. I mean, she does that for yeah. gospel rights, country rights, whatever, that that, that yeah. song would be what it needs to be. And um, that day, I was like, I want to do this. And so I just, it's, I've had to now. It's one of those things where it's in me, and I've just got to get wow. it out. So I, I was I was watching a documentary, uh, like, teaser last mm -hmm. night, and I shared it on Facebook just about Nashville songwriters yeah. and this movie that's coming out. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, they asked uh, a songwriter, Shane McEnally, said, what is songwriting to you? Mm -hmm. And he kept naming off, he's like, it's like a broken heart. It's mm -hmm. like a drug. It's like this. It's like, and mm -hmm. it's just, a, when you have that passion inside, and there's days where I feel like, and I, I saw Benji Cowart say mm -hmm. this one time, he said, who wrote Redeem for Big Daddy Week, yeah. he said, there's days I feel like I'm in there and I know exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Then there's days I'm in there and I'm like, I have no idea what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> but when it's in you, you just, you, you got it right. Yeah. So. so with that being said, um, everything that you just got through saying, um, what advice would you give an aspiring songwriter um, who kind of feels that way, you know, and doesn't really know sure. what they're doing or what direction they want to go? What advice would you give them? Uh, that would be giving that advice to myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, because people ask me that a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in my personal experience, I would just say, just keep writing. Um, and I know that sounds trite, but it, that's what it's about. Just mm -hmm. you keep writing. If you're really a songwriter, you really get that in, you just keep writing. And I would suggest collaborations. A lot mm -hmm. of songwriters, they think, well, 
you know, I, I can just do this on my own, or maybe they're too nervous to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, somebody said the other day, man, your songs have been this, you got this number one, this number one. And I, I said it in a laughing matter, mm -hmm. you know, I said, I just surround myself with people better than me. Mm -hmm. But it was the truth. I mean, I was, you know, cutting up. But surround yourself with, with writers that are seasoned. And mm -hmm. um, I am blessed that I, I write with people that, that are willing to take a chance on me. Because mm -hmm. I haven't been doing this that long. Yeah. Um, just a, f a few years, um, the seasoned writers, you know, Marsha Henry, Sue mm -hmm. Smith, Lee yeah. Black, um, Jerry Sally, mm -hmm. I mean, those people have have taken a, a risk on wasting a day with this young guy <laughs> that may not be any good, and, and not only have we just created some great songs, but we've created some great friendships, too. Yeah, and, uh, that's awesome. You know, that's, I, I'll take that. Over anything, even even if Lee Black is an Alabama fan, you know sometimes that's tough. You know oh, you have to Lord. pray through a co-writer. But <laughs> oh Lord, and that's one thing that I hear a lot is that um, the the songwriters you have this unique bond because you yeah. you share stories and things that maybe nobody else hears, and it comes out in a song. But you also have those friendships that you create that are incredible. That lasts a lot. Yeah. Because I mean, songwriters know how it feels to be told no yeah. over and over again, mm -hmm. and. And get your heart broken, and you walk out of a room thinking, "This is the best thing I've ever written," mm -hmm. and a publisher may go, "That's terrible," mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. so you, we all know how that feels, yeah. you know. And so it's a, it's a big old awesome family. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, with all this talk about songwriting, yeah. um, on the newest project, Clear Skies, um, you have an incredible song, "Walking Through Fire," oh, wow. and um, I want you to tell us the story behind that and kind of where that came from. Sure. Um, I was really blessed to be a part of Walking Through Fire. Actually, it was written right down this hall. I, I took you in that, mm -hmm, that yeah. writing room down there. Um, I wrote that with, I was able to write that with Lee Black and Sue C. Smith. And um, I tell the story often from stage. Uh, a lot of times people come up after a concert mm -hmm. and they'll say, you know, hey, yeah, this, this thing that you said here got me through mm -hmm. this time in my life. Or, hey, this song that you guys do really got me in a, a, a tough time and got me through that. Or, hey, we play, you know, sometimes I wonder, mm -hmm. oh, what a savior, it's so and such funeral, and it got me through a rough day. I kept using that word through. Mm -hmm. And um, we would talk about that often mm -hmm. in writing sessions. And um, I, I remember being in, in uh, one of our publishers' uh, office that day, Joe Dan, and Lee walked in that morning. Mm -hmm. And I'll get a chance to share all this on stage just because of mm -hmm. limited time. Lee walked in that day, and normally he's real bubbly and stuff. And um, I said, hey, man, what's going on? I said, you all right? And he said, and standing in the office that day, we were all just standing there having coffee before we got going. Mm -hmm. And he said, dude, we've just been walking through fire this week. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what was said the rest of the 20 minutes we stood in there. Because I kept yeah. hearing that in my yeah. head. And so we got in the room. And a lot of people don't know how this works. You get in the room and you catch up with your buddies. Uh -huh. And then you kind of just jump in. Hey, anybody got any ideas? Anything on your heart? And I think Lee said, you know, y'all got any hooks? You got any ideas? And I said, man. I said, you said something this morning, just a little bit ago. I said, it's been ringing in my heart and in my mind. He said, I saw the look on your face when I said it. Wow. And he knew. He yeah. knew. I mean, in my mind, I'm already right. And, it started. Uh, and I said, do you care if we chase that? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we prayed about it. And we started talking about those stories that mm -hmm. people bring to us at concerts mm -hmm. as well. How these, these things get you through this. Yeah. And man, we just started. I'll never forget. He sits down at the keyboard. He's still in, sitting in there. Mm -hmm. And he just starts playing this melody. We were humming along. He said, let me introduce you to Jesus. And I was like, oh, 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 oh okay. So I was like, man, this is, this is something yeah. special. Yeah. And then having Sue C. Smith in there, yeah. I mean, there's not a better lyricist out mm -hmm. there. And we joke, because that little C in her name stands for C. Can't nobody do it like Sue Smith. You oh, know? Um, but she started, she goes, hey, what if we go grab stories from the Old Testament and the New Testament mm -hmm. on where the faithfulness of God was just so mm -hmm. evident and so strong and just remind yeah. the people about that. And I was just like, let's do it. Wow. And we wrote that song that day and it was just, mm -hmm. we had no idea that Earn House Signature Sound would record that yeah. song. We actually had pitched it to a couple different groups mm -hmm. and I won't name any names, but, <laughs> but it, you know, sometimes the song just finds the right place. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Wilburn pitched Four Days Late for years to almost yeah. every group in the industry. Yeah before Karen Pettit heard it. And I mean, wow. so it, I think the Lord just sometimes just says, Waits you know what, the right group. Yeah. Well, I'm going to yeah. hold on to this mm -hmm. one. So. 
Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, that song, every single time y'all sing it, it's like this, you can just feel, like, uh, you feel the heart of it, you know? So, uh, I so good. I appreciate you saying that. So, Thank you. switching gears a little bit, yeah. I know that you like to work out a lot. I and do. I know that you like to live a healthy, fit lifestyle, which I love. So, <laughs> what inspires you to live a healthy, fit lifestyle? Well, I mean, I want to see my kids grow up, you yeah. know? I mean, I just, I, there's so much out there that's just bad for you and mm -hmm. just people dying of different things. I just, I figure out, why don't I do my part? <laughs> and I enjoy it. Yeah. I really do. Um, I would work out a little bit years past, but um, honestly, when I, I, and I would lift more than do cardio, mm -hmm. but when I came to Signature Sound, there was Doug Anderson. <laughs> And uh, we joke uh, uh, often. Doug says, you know, you gave me triceps, I gave you lungs. You know, because I didn't run yeah. much before I met him. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's just part of my life now. And I just try to, and we, there's no secret, we move a lot on stage. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be up there hassling exactly. and gasping for air. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, so. I, I mean, and now it's just becoming part of my, yeah. my life. So. Yeah, I know for me it's a big stress relief. So. It really yeah. is. I, I just get up there and, and just, I don't yeah. know, just get away. Yeah. So. Well, that's awesome. That's great. All right, so we're going to get into the speed round, which these are like oh, not discussion boy. questions. You don't have to get super fast if you don't want to. These okay. are just more fun questions. All right. I'm so ready. the first one, what is your current favorite song? Wait, I was ready. I'm just kidding. I'm ready. <laughs> what is your current favorite song right now? Uh, honestly, it, I just listened to it. it. I'm a redneck. Sorry, it's not a gospel song. It's a song called I Lived It mm -hmm. by Blake Shelton. It was written by some boys that grew up in the same town I grew mm -hmm. up in. So How cool. You need to look it up. It is amazing. I just showed it to Ernie the other night. Awesome. Even though it's right. country, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh, okay, what is your, who is your biggest vocal influence? Oh, man. I had a few. Um, and the, the southern world, it, it would range from mm -hmm. different people. I mean, Michael English growing up was mm -hmm. just, to me, awesome. it was just it. Mm -hmm. And then Michael Bolton, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but then in the southern world, I mean, you know, of course, I listened to cathedrals growing mm -hmm. up, and you know, I listened to the vocal band. Mm -hmm. So I had, yeah. I, I had a conglomeration of them. So well, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. What's one of your funniest moments on stage? There's a couple. There's, a couple. Right. There's some I can't. <laughs> one of the funniest things to me, and I can tell it because it didn't happen to me. But it was funny. I was laughing. We had uh, a full band uh -huh. in Ernie House Singer Sound. Mm -hmm. We were doing that goofy song, mm -hmm. Moving Up the Glory Land. And, so, uh. and Ernie thought it was funny for everybody to do the <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so he would run around, and Zach mm -hmm. at the time, our driver, uh -huh. he did it. Kelly would do it, David would do it, you know. And then Tim or Ian, whoever the bass uh -huh. singer was, yeah. would do it. Well, this night in particular, we had everybody set up on a drum riser or on a riser. Uh -huh. And so he thought he was young enough to make riser to riser, going from drummer to uh -huh. guitar player. So when he did, he made it. I thought everything was fine. He gives me that look. I was like, like what, I'm gonna what, die. What, what? I thought he was hurt. <laughs> uh -huh. He ripped his pants from seam to seam. Oh, Jumping my from the riser. Word. So, if anybody's at that concert and wonder why Ernie changed suits in oh, their mission, word. there you go. <laughs> oh, my word. I'm sure y'all just asked, died. I'm I sure y'all just died. I was done. I don't word. remember singing the rest of the set. Oh, my word. <laughs> okay. What's one of your favorite spots on the bus? Huh. My favorite spot on the bus. I got two. I like sitting up in the bloody seat mm -hmm. when we're if we're traveling still in the morning trying to mm -hmm. get to the date. Um, and then honestly, I like my bunk. Mm -hmm. I just that's kind of just my little way. <laughs> just pull the curtain, get away from check out. Thing. Yeah, because we have a rule: you can't oh. talk in the bunk area. So it's just dead silence. The air's on like fifty two, and you know. Just uh -huh. Got it. All right. So how long does it take you to do your hair for a concert? Oh man. You gotta go there. I know, you're probably hoping. Please don't bring that up. No, no. Actually, it doesn't take as long as it used to. When I was mm -hmm. like, when I was messing it up, uh -huh. when it, so it took me longer to mess it up than, than it does it. to fix it now. Um, oh, so it's not, it doesn't take that long. But you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. It's about every other night somebody would come up and go, hey, what product do you use in your hair? Uh -huh. you know, this may be a weird question. I'm like, get it I get it every time. time. <laughs> so. Oh, Lord. Okay. Are you a morning workout person or evening? Morning, because if I don't do it, I let my day slip away, mm -hmm. and I keep, I've got great intentions of going. Mm -hmm. And then I, something else always gets in the way. It does. There's always something else uh -huh. to do. Yeah. I know. All right. Last one. How long does it take you to respond to my text? Oh, I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. I'm joking. You really don't have to answer that. I just had to throw that in. Hey, 
Hey, I, I texted this morning. You first. did. I was you like, did. I'm in or out. That I'm was here. a miracle. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I'm just serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Okay, so the last question that I always like to wrap up with, um, and I ask this to everybody that comes on because everybody usually has, you know, different answers, and I love seeing what everybody has to say. So, what advice would you give a young person or even an adult who wants to do what you want to do? Hmm. Um, don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm oh, joking. Because I, I love. I'm. I'm really. I'm kidding. Because I, I love what I do. Um, if I, I, I'm careful using the word called, um, because people kind of take it out of context. But I feel like if it's something that you're called to do and it's something that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you have to do it, mm -hmm. no matter what level or what scale that may be on. Mm -hmm. um, I hear Ernie say often. You know, God calls us to sing. He didn't call us to sing to numbers. So it doesn't matter if we're singing to, you know, 60,000 yeah. overseas somewhere mm -hmm. in an event or if we've got a couple hundred in a, a concert venue mm -hmm. in South Alabama. Yeah. Um, we're going to do what we do. We're going to mm -hmm. give it 100% because mm -hmm. we love what we do. Yeah. So if you, if you love to sing, if this is what you're really passionate about doing, sing. Don't, it doesn't matter where it's at. Mm -hmm. Was I, when I was a kid, I was singing at a flea market. I had no idea. True story. <laughs> singing at a flea market, and I had no idea that there was a promoter yeah. in the crowd. Wow. And he asked if I could come to his event in South Carolina. And I, all because I, I mm -hmm. was just, you know, the Bible says go. Mm -hmm. you know, go into the world. It, yeah. it doesn't say specific places. It just mm -hmm. says to go. Mm -hmm. So just uh, be available and mm -hmm. just be ready to sing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's, my, I, that's awesome. Yeah. No, that's great advice. It's just... Being, you know, plant where God puts you yeah. and do what you can when you're there. And then, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for this. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. Where can they Dude. find you, um, Ernie House's Interest Sound Tour dates? Sure. Merchandise, CDs. There's a new DVD coming out, you guys. I was there, and I know it's phenomenal. So as soon, <laughs> you can pre-order it now, but as soon as it releases, you better get it because I know it's going to be awesome. That so where fun. can they find all that? So the easiest thing is just go to ErnieHaas.com. Mm -hmm. And so there's links for everything. But we invite you to, to go on there and look for the Instagram and Twitter, Facebook and all that stuff to you keep up. You want to follow them because that's like my <laughs> favorite part. I love seeing all the updates from the road. So It's yeah. fun. So it And you can there's links on there, I think, for all the guys that have their, their personal social media. So the way to follow their families and things like that. So, yeah, check it out, ErnieHaas.com. Well, thank you so much for doing yeah, this. Thanks for having me. I've been wanting to have him on for a long time, so this is awesome. It was my fault, not hers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've been wanting to have you on for a long time, and uh, it's. I remember. Um, I was thinking back this morning. I remember being like six, seven, and uh, watching the original members, and then whenever you came, um, I remember watching like the DVDs of the that y'all would record. Yeah. So it's a real surreal moment for me to, me to be able to do this. So thank well, you so thank much. Thank you, so, and thanks for making me feel you. old right now. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, oh, thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much.